If I asked you to close your eyes and think about a robot, maybe you envision something like this. Maybe we want to think about robotics from a different perspective. Robotics as a field really started in industrial settings where very precise and fast motion was needed. Those same technologies are not really suitable for interacting with people. When we think of biorobotics, we really think of something that's more like the field of AI, of artificial intelligence. Thinking about that combination of both the body and the brain and, you know, the group. There's just a lot of examples in biology where we can see how that can be achieved and how we can leverage the same kinds of ideas. I think biorobotics is a new discipline connecting living creatures and robots. Let's take a look at nature, see how nature does things looking at uh, design principles in nature and trying to uh, build robots that either implement those principles or interact with those principles. Looking at humans, looking at biomechanics, looking at the materials that exist in nature, looking at the algorithms that nature uses. What is intelligence? What is the technology that's going to make us be able to understand what biology already has? And hopefully it's not just inspiration but actually bio-informed that we take what we learn from animals and use it in applying those techniques to our robots. Almost all locomoting robots and many of the manipulator robots are inspired by these soft animals that we're familiar with. If we wanted to make a robot that acted some way like this, how would we do this? So compared to more traditional robots, the things that are you know, welding the doors on, on your car in an assembly line, we're making robots which are inherently safer to interact with. Because they're soft or they're small, and because of their size or because of their compliance and ability to adapt to sort of natural environments, can perform tasks that are difficult or impossible with other classes of robots. Take, for example, the RoboBees project, which is the, the goal of creating a colony of autonomous robotic insects. There's nothing off the shelf which are, is going to be used for any of the components, and so we have to reinvent every feature of this robot and along the way have new, you know, new technologies that are developed as part of that. Many of the people in our field are, are inspired by the incredible ability of biological systems to cooperate. If we think of swarms in nature, let's say you think of termites that build mounds, or you think of ant colonies that can forage over large regions. Imagine being able to create robotic systems that could do those tasks. So could I make robots that build? Could I make robots that could go through a coral reef and monitor the health of a system? If you think about traffic and self-driving cars, as soon as you have a lane full of self-driving cars, you have a lot of robots on the road. So if we can build an algorithmic understanding, how do you have large scalable collectives work together in a decentralized way? And they're going to be slightly faulty and they're going to have low capabilities as opposed to the absolute perfect robot that can perfectly navigate through some complex environment. That's a really amazing manufacturing technology, right? Because you could mass manufacture simple things and then those simple things would cooperate and create something of a much higher complexity. What we are aiming at in robotics is really this concept that where humans and robots can coexist, can coordinate, can distribute tasks to the joint benefit of all. As you know, there are many big differences between the driving mechanism of current robot and human body. So we're working on softwareable robots to both enhance and augment the ability of healthy individuals. And then we're trying to apply the same technology to people who have some kind of physical disability. Historically, when people have designed wearable robotics, they've tried to think about how do we give someone superhuman strength. What we believe is that there's a lot of people with some kind of disability who don't need superhuman strength, but just need a small amount of assistance but that small amount of assistance can have a pretty big impact in their quality of life. So we're trying to take a new approach and say, how do we design new robotic components that are using soft materials to be able to apply forces to a person and without the mass and the kinematic restrictions associated with rigid devices. There's a potential to 
like really help people who have severe injuries. It's taking an, an unconventional approach. You're not saying, okay, how do we improve on the status quo? It's saying, how do we basically take a fundamental leap? We can push all these different fronts, but somewhere behind it, there are core ideas that we can share, like how do you produce autonomy? What are the sensing technologies that can work? Can we make softer robots? What we're trying to do is make robots smaller, softer, safer. The line between person and robot get blurred even more, where people are interacting with robots in ways that they never imagined. These are ways that, that will have profound impact on our lives in the future and, and robotics will be at the forefront of that.